So video recorded on the 7th June 2017. Today we're going to talk about mycotic corneal ulcers. Okay, mycotic corneal ulcer. Now, number one, <coughs> what you need to know about mycotic corneal ulcer is its synonyms because exam questions can come out anyway. Okay. So when I'm talking about mycotic corneal ulcer, it is to be noted, right? What are its synonyms? So it can be also called mycotic keratitis. So that's the first one. Okay. So that means what inflammation of the cornea due to fungus. Keratitis. Right, that can lead to corneal ulcer. It is also known as fungal keratitis and it's also known as fungal corneal ulcer. Okay, from all of these words itself, you can actually talk about the definition. You don't need to any understanding about it, right? Ulcer. So that tells you. Uh, by definition, right? It is simply a breach or discontinuity, right? Discontinuity in corneal epithelium, okay, which is associated with molecular death of corneal tissue. Right, and all of this is due to an inflammation or an infection of fungus, okay, or due to fungus, okay, or you can even say due to fungal infection, inflammation due to fungal infection, right? Commonly, it is seen with in patients with lowered immunity, right? Talking about the etiology of it, there are filamentous fungus and yeast. So the important filamentous fungus that you need to remember, right, is aspergillus and fusarium okay whereas important yeast that cause so now there are other filamentous fungi also but then i'm just talking about the important one very commonly is aspergillus and fusarium and yeast is candida very commonly and sometimes to a lesser extent cryptococcus so you get the difference between uh, yeast filamentous fungi and yeast okay clear now that is the etiology so what is the mood that this fungi get into the body how suddenly these fungi can get into the body so, and normally vegetative injury okay very commonly is vegetative <coughs> injury okay that can be from anything such as broken twigs broken branches of leaves sorry of three broken branches of trees hay straw right all of this can contain vegetative material right that normally get into the eyes of those working in the field okay so normally you see it in farmers okay so that can be branch of tree it can be hay it can be straw okay but normally it's seen in the uh <coughs> what uh we're saying field workers yeah right now, 
Besides that, it also can be a secondary fungal infection. That means, what does it mean? A patient is immunocompromised due to some other disease or infection, they can get a secondary fungal infection. Common digit eye disease itself, that gives fungal infection. You need to note is bullous keratopathy and dry eye. Those are important ones. Okay. Even her pretty character, just if you can remember. Okay. Bullous keratopathy is when there is bully in the uh, what is that? Eye cornea. Okay. Clear. <coughs> now, something that is important to note: Does antibiotics and steroid has a role in causing fun antibiotics, sorry, and steroids have a role in causing this fungal infection. Are they capable? And the answer is yes, these antibiotics and steroids can cause fungal infection. Okay? Simply because if you talk about antibiotics, they disrupt the normal bacterial fungal flora okay bacterial fungal flora okay whereas so bacterial fungal flora disrupted bacterial fungal flora can be disrupted right so the symbiotic relationship that they normally have now right is also lost with a steroid, what can happen, right? A normal fungi, a, a fungi that is normally symbiotic with uh, other organisms, suddenly becomes a facultative pathogen. Why suddenly it becomes a facultative pathogen? Because simply, steroids, right, e they decrease body immunity. So the fungi, such as candida especially and cryptococcus right candida and cryptococcus they have the capability to become facultative pathogens okay clear <coughs> so obviously these two conditions are predisposes to fungal infections just write it down here so now this Fungi, they become facultative pathogens. Okay, it's so ugly, it's writing one minute. So, what happens to the fungi? They become now facultative pathogens. Yeah, just to make it easier in case I'm revise it from this letter. So clinical features, this is very interesting, it's similar to especially the symptoms and signs you're going to talk about too, right? So the symptoms, right, is similar to bacterial corneal ulcer. So how you see, right, you can just talk about signs of inflammation. What are the signs of inflammation? First, Kellogg temperature dolor pain so there will be pain and foreign body sensation in the cornea right then rubor redness so there will be congestion circum corneal or ciliary congestion commonly then tumor swelling how I so many see this as edema so there will be reflex Hyperlepcrimation, okay, that gives rise to watering. Lossia fun function, lossia, functio loss, lossia, lossia, okay, so, isa, lossia, okay, something function. 
So what happens here? You're going to gate now to the uh, eye. What happens? It starts becoming it. It has corneal haze, so it starts giving rise to blurry of vision. Right. So loss of function in this case of the eye. Okay. You also other than blurring of vision, <coughs> you also can get mild photophobia. Okay. Clear. So these are the symptoms. Talking about salient features, very interesting. Or salient signs, I would say. Is that this ulcer is going to be grayish white. It is going to be finger feather like projection or feathery finger like projection. Like projection you're going to have. You are going to get hypopion. You are going to get also satellite lesions. And finally, the sterile immune ring. Okay? Clear? So, how are you going to diagnose it though? This one, right? Look up uh, all of these pictures on Google. They're pretty. Actually, I have them. I'll just open it for you. Uh, I make my notes. I actually put pictures into them, right? So this is the grayish white, feathery finger-like extension. Okay. This is the hypopion. This is the satellite lesions. You can see there's two big ones here and two small ones here. And this is the sterile immune ring. Okay? Clear? Right? So how are you going to diagnose this? Obviously, these clinical manifestations are very diagnostic. Okay? And together with that, when you have these clinical features plus history of vegetative injury definitely it is highly diagnostic of a fungal corneal ulcer but if you fail to elicit the history right what else can tell you that it, it might be a fungal corneal ulcer maybe you started treating it as bacterial corneal ulcer what happens is over a period of time, you realize that the corneal ulcer is not getting be better. Then you must have an idea that it's from the corneal ulcer. So you can make a mistake while eliciting history, yes. But then you must know that if the ulcer is not healing, chances it's a worsening of ulcer. That means that should indicate that it's a fungal ulcer. Right? Oh, obviously the thing that so that is the second way to actually note okay the third and most important however though is lab investigations okay you have got microscopic investigations and culture we don't have to go in the details but we know several dextrose agar culture what we got gymsa uh, what else gram potassium hydroxide Okay, someone else we got calco floor white also is there. Okay, clear. So that is diagnosis. Now we're moving on to treatment, right? So, treatment of it. There are some specific treatment and some non specific supportive treatment. Let us talk about the specific treatment. You can have topical or systemic therapy. So you're going to give basically antifungal. So think of it that day only. What antifungal comes to your mind? 
topically you are going to you can give fluconazole 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 okay fluconazole hopefully I'm spelling it right flu flu fluconazole okay if I'm not mistaken right sorry problem with drug names I drop netamycin I drop and nistatin eye ointment why I uh, just will talk later a little bit about the difference between an eye drop and eye ointment systemically I'm going to give again the flucano fluconazole or ketoconazole conazole obviously this is given for a longer period of six to eight weeks this is given for a shorter period of two to three weeks or non-specific treatment that is important three things you can give cycloplegics okay analgesics plus NT inflammatory okay and vitamins A B and C so the cycloplegics normally you give is 1% atropine whether eye ointment or eye drop or 2% home atropine right eye drop analgesics normally you give is ibuprofen and or, or sorry or paracetamol now why do you need to give cycloplegics why you need to give analgesics why all this supportive therapy is required uh, vitamins first of all let's go from bottom top it's easier vitamins simply just help in healing of ulcer analgesics and anti-inflammatory number one analgesics to relieve pain number two anti-inflammatory is to decrease the inflammatory process right simple cycloplegics okay atropine and home atropine now what do they actually do right so they basically right very interesting uh, just try to explain it to you the relief pressure on the anterior ciliary artery okay you take these drugs so what happens right blood supply now increases obviously because anterior ciliary artery is, there's no pressure on it so blood supply increases so what happens more antibodies are brought to the side that aids in the healing it also decreases hyperemia and vascular permeability okay clear okay jigs and just for your information let's say if all of this fail then what you're going to do surgically what you can do is therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty that would be good right now just to differentiate between eye ointment and eye drop drop eye ointment now eye drop normally administered in the daytime this administered in the night time why administered in the daytime what is this advantage what is this disadvantage now there is quick oops why is it not quick absorption okay whereas here there is slow absorption So quick absorption means gives you quick action. Slow absorption means gives you slow action. 
so that way this eye drop would be good but it gets diluted very quickly by tears on the other hand this does not get diluted by tears okay right so this eye ointment has a longer duration of action this one has a shorter duration of action just to complete it okay clear uh, but eye ointment what they happen right they cause a lot of stickiness okay in the morning when you try to open uh, your eyelids get sticked especially the cilia the uh, your eyelashes right they get stuck commonly okay that covers fungal corneal ulcer 